Hello and welcome to this video training series from cgcookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and in these next 15 hours I'm going to be taking you through the entire process needed to model this vehicle design done by David Ravoy, who many of you will know from the Blender Foundation's Sintel Movie Project. Using this concept art and the modeling sheets provided by David, we're going to be going through the entire process from start to finish to model this entire vehicle. We'll start by blocking in all of the major forms of our vehicle to start getting a good idea of the silhouette and general feeling of our model. We'll then move on to some smaller blocking details to start getting a better idea of how everything is put together in here. Since you'll notice, particularly in the engine areas, we've got a lot of different components to work with uh, that we definitely want to work through very carefully before moving on to the detail stage. As soon as we're ready for the detail stage, we'll move in on the front section of the vehicle to start doing some good detailing. Of course, always focusing on clean topology and working with a lot of edge by edge modeling tools, along with making good use of the edge slide, edge loop, and creasing functionality. We'll then move on to start detailing the midsection, particularly in the engine area, working with a lot of piece by piece modeling to kind of create everything that we're looking at, including working with meshes and curves in some areas. We'll then go on to focus on the wings, again focusing on clean topology, shapes, and getting a realistic and believable feeling to our model. Then we'll follow this up by working on the tail section, again focusing on the same things, making good use of multiple different kinds of modifiers, including arrays, mirrors, and so on. And then finally, we'll move in back to the cockpit to do a little bit of interior modeling to give us a good indication, even from a distance, that this is a complete model that we could animate, we can render, and it will still feel complete without feeling lazy as if we just kind of ignored the middle section. So overall, we're left with a final vehicle that goes through each stage of the process using box modeling, edge modeling, modifiers, and many other modeling tools in Blender to be left with this final result that is ready to be textured, rendered, animated, or whatever else you wish to do with it.
The first step as we get started in modeling our vehicle is to go ahead and set up the modeling sheets that David Ravoy has provided for us within our Blender viewport. Now luckily in Blender 2.5, we're actually able to set up multiple background images such that we can have our front view, side view, and top view all within the same viewport, but are context sensitive or dynamic in the sense that they are only displayed when you're in the correct viewport. For example, if we switch to front view, by hitting one on our number pad and then hit five to turn off our perspective mode, we'll be able to see only our front view. Same thing for side and top view. And this is actually pretty, pretty easy to set up. All you need to do is hit in to bring up your properties panel. And then we're going to down at the bottom here, check this background images option. And this just enables us to toggle whether or not we want to use the images, even if there's some loaded. So we'll just check that and then toggle down the arrow below and let's click add image. Now we can go ahead and see that it's not set currently, so we need to toggle this down, click open, and we can just navigate here to our, our concept. And then within here, we have the different modeling sheets. We've got our artwork, our full modeling sheet, and the front, side, and top. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and grab the front. We'll load it in, so we'll just click open. And before we do anything, we can go ahead and check and see that first off, it's lined up pretty well. It's not quite exact. We'll need to move it over a little bit to the right. But you also notice that if we switch views, say for example by hitting seven to go to top view, or three, it stays exactly the same. The image is still displayed. So what we wanna do is change the axis option right here. We're gonna just go ahead and set that to front, such that now only when we're in front view, which again is one on your number pad, if you hit three, then it doesn't display. And now that we have that set, let's go ahead and just adjust the X offset just a little bit. We can just left click and drag and move this around. If it jumps a little too much at each notch, you can just go ahead and hold down shift and that'll move in smaller increments. And we can see that right about there at 0 0.08, it looks pretty much exactly centered. So we'll go ahead and leave it just like that. Well, let's go ahead and click add image again. Uh, we can go ahead and toggle this one down. In this case, this one will be our side view. So again, we'll just zip back to the concept and go ahead and click on the side view and click open. And first off, we can go ahead and see that right now it's overlaid. Again, it's set to all views. And we don't really want this, but one thing that you can do in the case that your images don't line up is you can use this to go ahead and line up your images to, or to check whether they line up. So in this case, if I use my, my X switch here, I can see that as I move this over, these points right in here actually line up really well. Same thing with the top here. Maybe this is a little bit lower, but I see that the top fins are really close. And this is part of the reason that we commissioned David is because he's able to get these very, very accurate and very close. And one of the reasons that they're a very, they're a pleasure to work with because they're very, very close. So let's go ahead and set this. In this case, it's going to be the left view. I believe we can double check that if we now switch into hit three to switch to side view and lo and behold, you notice that it doesn't display. So let's go ahead and switch this over to the right view. I tend to mix them up and forget which one is which, but now that displays perfectly. And the last step is to go ahead and add in yet another image that will be our top view. So we'll just grab that real quick and we can see our top view here loaded in. And what we wanna do now is line it up with the side view and the, the top view. So what we need to do is such that if we're in top view, we can see the image here, which is fine, but what we don't have necessarily and that we can't really check because of the different orientations on the views is whether or not the nose of our, of our copter or our vehicle is gonna line up, same thing with the tail. So the way that I like to do this, since the overlay doesn't quite work, is go ahead and just use the mesh to test it. So let's hit tab to go into edit mode, and all that we're gonna do is hit S and Y and scale it up until it reaches the end of the, the thruster here and the tip of the nose there, just about like that. And this then way we can just go ahead and hit seven to switch into top view, and we can see that it doesn't quite line up so it's a little bit large. And so what, what, what we can do is just hold down shift and scale the size down just a little bit until it lines up perfectly just like that. So we can go ahead and hit control Z a couple times, which will uh, reset our scale back to normal, hit tab to leave edit mode, and then we can double check each one of our images 
and they look perfect. You can adjust the transparency on each one if you want. Uh, oh, that's the top one. Here we go. So you can see how well it works. Uh, if you want it really bright, you'll find that it kind of tends to, uh, it's a little harder on the eyes, but it also doesn't show the mesh nearly as well. But you can see your image all the way down to the small details in it much better. So that's just completely up to you, personal preference. For me, I like to leave it at the default of 0.5. With our modeling sheet set up, we're going to go ahead and begin the modeling process. In this first section, we're going to be creating the basic shape, or in other words, blocking out the forms that will allow us to get a good idea of all the different forms and curves and shapes to our mesh here. Because since we're working with something that's very intricately detailed with a lot of interlocking parts and a lot of small parts, we need to have a really good idea of the form that we're working with and the shape that we want before we go in and start doing all the detail or else it's just going to become more and more challenging to modify the form as we get further along. So the way that we're going to do this is first we're just going to create the basic form for the body then we'll go on and do the basic form for the wings and the tail all in this one section and when I mean basic I mean very very simple basically just blocking it out to create a nice silhouette which we'll be looking at that a little bit further in the next part to refine the silhouette and get all the nice curves and such to our mesh exactly like we want them to prepare for detailing. So let's just start out by hitting tab to go into edit mode. And what I want to do is first using my default cube here, I'm going to just go ahead and hit in to hide my, my properties panel. And I'm also going to hide the toolbar over here. Uh, I prefer not to work with it, but I'll definitely be referencing it from time to time as I go along to show you where some of the different tools are related. So let's just hit T to close that, and that will just maximize our viewport so we've got some extra space. And what I want to do, since this is actually pretty nicely sized right here, let's just hit 3 to go into side view, and let's hit A to deselect everything. And then I'm just going to control, left click and drag to deselect these vertices down here. You'll notice that I'm in wireframe mode uh, as indicated with Z and also by choosing it right down here. And also when in shaded mode, I also have this option checked to limit the selection to the visible such that if I rotate around my view like this with my middle mouse button, if, if I turn this option off, you'll now notice that the vertices behind the current surface are visible, which right now when we only have a simple mesh, that's fine. But as our mesh becomes more and more complex, that'll tend to just create a lot of clutter in our scene. So turning this on just hides all of that, but it also means that we can no longer select those vertices behind the front faces. So what we need to do is just toggle into wireframe mode by hitting Z, or choose it down here to quickly select those vertices. So from side view, I'm just going to control, left click and drag to draw around that real quick. And I'm just going to hit G to enable my transform mode, and or translate, I'm just going to pull it up like this, then I'll left click. I'm going to hit A to deselect. I'm going to do the same thing up here. So again, that's control, left click and drag, pull this down, and then I'll do the same thing on the front. And so I'm just positioning that to be about right. Uh, this one actually looks to be almost exact right now, although we can switch into front view on one to get a better idea. And we can immediately see that for one, a couple of our images are not lined up. So this was an error that I made in the first section. And so what we need to do is Let's just hit three to go back in the side view. Let's grab this top section and we're going to just move it up along the Z axis by hitting G and Z or by grabbing, by left click and dragging on this top piece. And we're just gonna line up the back ver vertex with this line right here. So the top of the, the, um, the rotors. And we can see actually that it's actually pretty close. So in fact, we're actually going to go ahead and leave it like it is. Well, no, actually, we do want to go ahead and pull this up, say, right about there, just to the top. And then let's go ahead and hit N to bring up our properties panel. And on the front one here, we'll just toggle this arrow down. And let's just drag this up along the Y axis to about right there. And if we now go ahead and check, uh, if we take this down to about the center of the tail fin there, we can double check it by pulling this back along the Y axis and see that that's pretty nicely placed. Okay, so fix that real quick. So we'll just pull this down just a little bit to be about right there. And then we'll grab this one and pull it back down to about there. 
And what I want to do now is we're just going to select this front side. So I'll control left click, click and drag to just draw around those real quickly. And then I'm just going to hit E to extrude. And immediately that puts me into translate mode and locks it to the normal or the direction that the face is pointing. And we can just pull it right out to about the, the distance of the nose, left click, and then I'm just going to hit G to pull it down, left click to confirm that, rotate it to scale it or to rotate it around a little bit such that it's following the curvature of the nose here. And then I'll just hit S to scale it down to about right there. I can view that in front view and see that it lines up pretty well. So we're pretty much good. And maybe we need to actually move that down just a little bit more. Something about like that should be about right. Okay, so back in side view, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use, or let's extrude the back now. So I'm gonna hit B to middle click and drag. So there's actually two ways to select. You can hit B to middle click and drag like this or you can control left click and drag to draw around. Uh, control left click or gives you your lasso selection, can give you very complex selections like this, allows you to really just select whatever you need, whereas box select is just very simple. You also have your circle select. If you hit C, you can bring up a circle, which you can then scale the influence up or down with your scroll wheel or plus and minus on your keypad, and then you can just paint over what you want. In this case, we just want the back, so I'm now just hit hit E to extrude, take it out to about the, the back of the thruster, and then we'll scale it down like that by hitting S, moving in our cursor, and then left clicking. We can check that in top view and see that it's lined up very, very nicely. So from top view, we can see that we want to go ahead and scale this in. So I'll hit S, X, scale that in. And then maybe we want to go ahead and scale out the front. So hit S, X, scale it out and that the rest looks pretty good. So this is our very basic form right here. And what we'll do now is we're going to use what's called the loop cut tool, which you can find from the toolbar right in here. So you can find it under loop cut and slide. I'm just gonna hit T to hide the toolbar though. And we'll first demonstrate this here along the cockpit. If we hit control R, you'll notice that a purple line is overlaid on the edges that our cursor is currently crossing. So by crossing over an edge, we're going to be able to add in a new edge loop to cut through that surface. So for example, right here, if I just now left click, it'll immediately give me a new edge loop and put me into what's called edge slide mode that allows me just to slide this back and forth along the current surface to define where I want it. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and put it right about here at the edge of these vents. And now I can just go ahead and move this up just a little bit, and then I'll deselect everything with A, and select these ones here and move them up along the Z axis by just hitting G and then Z, or I can grab them right here to move them up just a little bit to fit that form. And go ahead and switch in the top view and select all of them again. And in this case, I'm just gonna hit S and X to scale it out along the X axis to about there. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing again by adding in another loop cut right in the center there. But this time we're not gonna slide it, so what we can do to just cancel the slide is just right click, and that will just leave the cut right in the center. And now we can go ahead and switch into side view by hitting three, and we'll move this up a little bit, and then we'll hit A to deselect, select these ones here, and move them up to fit right there. We wanna go ahead and do this same thing uh, right here in the middle and along the tail. But we're gonna add, introduce one more thing along with the loop cut that allows us to get a little extra control, and that is the number of loops that we want. Here we added in two different loops, and we wanna do the same thing right in here. So if we hit Control R, and then just scroll up on our scroll wheel, or hit the plus and minus on the keypad, we can define the number of loops that we want. And you can see this obviously quite clearly il illustrated. And in this case, we're just gonna add in three. So we can now just left click, and you will notice too that when you do that, it no longer puts you into edge slide mode. So now I'm just gonna hit S and then Z to scale along the Z axis. So then I can just scale this down to be about right there. I'll go ahead and deselect this one, which you can do by hitting B and then middle click and dragging or alt left click and dragging. Just drag the drag across. And then we're gonna go ahead and select these ones. We're just gonna rotate, pull this down just a little bit like that. And then we'll go ahead and deselect those ones again by middle click and dragging with our box select. And we'll select just this one, pull it up along the Z axis there. 
And then let's go ahead and add in another loop cut right here, which will slide down to about there. On the bottom, we'll go ahead and pull this down about like that. And what we want to do is we're just getting all the different forms or the basically the silhouette of our mesh. So maybe we'll go ahead and select this area here. We'll hit S, X, scale it out. On the back here, we're going to select this section here. Hit S and X, move that in. We'll move this one in just a little bit. And we can move this one in just a little bit like that as well. Maybe move this one in a bit further. So I'm just hitting S to scale it. And then I'm hitting X to constrain that scale to strictly along the X axis as indicated by the line right here. Okay, so that gives me the uh, main form within the, the body of the mesh. Oh, well, maybe I'll go ahead and add in another loop cut right in here, such that I can then go ahead and pull this up about like this for where the top of the wings will be. Maybe I'll pull this one back here. I'll pull this one back and maybe move that one over like that. I can go ahead and select this loop. I'm going to move it back here and then deselect everything with A and select just this bottom point and move it up such that I'm following the contours a little better. Same thing there. We can go ahead and move this up. Uh, we can see that from front view we need to move actually all the way up to there. Uh, should be about right. Same thing, we'll go ahead and move this one up as well. Maybe not quite as high. And let's add in another loop cut right in here that will allow us to ju then just pull that down to get the, the basic shapes. And maybe on this one we'll go ahead and scale it in just a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and select these ones as well by shift right clicking on them. Hit S, X scale it in. Let's go ahead and select this one, which another way that you can select them if you want a continuous series of loops is just alt right click on an edge and that will select the entire edge loop. So from top view we can hit control E and what we want to do is control E brings up our edge specials menu. So then we can just go down to edge slide, slide it up like this to right there and then hit S, X, scale it out. And that looks good. So what I want to do now is actually let's go ahead and select this we're gonna take it back down to there and then we're just gonna hit E to extrude take it up to the top there and that will give us a much cleaner mesh uh, with a little bit more control for later down the road there we are what this also allows us to do then is from the front view we'll start working on the wings so let's select these we'll select these and we're gonna hit S X scale them in to be about lined up with that and then we can go ahead and select, or actually, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is since we have basically the main form created, I want to start adding in symmetry to this. So since I'm doing, going to do the wings and such now, I'm ready to just add in what's called a mirror modifier to allow me to work on just one side. So what we need to do is we're just going to hit Control R to add in a loop cut because we need to have a central line that we can then delete half the model. So if we hit Control R right down the center here with a perfectly symmetrical mesh currently and just left click and then right click to cancel the scale the slide it'll be left perfectly in the center with a perfectly straight line. If for any reason yours is not perfectly straight just hit S, X and then 0 to scale it to 0 all together and that will just straighten them out perfectly along the x-axis and you can just hit enter. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is hit B to left click and drag diesel or select the entire left side you'll notice that I've got the center line selected as well so we need to go ahead and hit X and delete faces if I were to delete vertices it would delete my inside edge as well but if I just hit X and delete faces then I have exactly half the model and I can now go over to the modifiers panel click add modifier and choose mirror and one other option that I want to enable is the clipping option because if I don't enable it then I can pull these central vertices away from the center which I don't want because I want to keep this as a seamless mesh so now I can just enable the clipping option and I can no longer pull that away okay let's go ahead and start extruding the wings so I'm gonna select these four vertices by just shift right clicking on them and I'm gonna hit E to extrude take it up to this first seam in the wing I'm gonna hit S to scale down scale it down to about like that. Let's go into top view and let's hit S and Y, scale this out, bring it out to back, about right there. We can see that this actually needs to come back quite a ways and so let's go in here from the top view, or excuse me, from the side view and let's just pull these back a bit more. We'll pull that back a bit more as well and 
that'll be fairly close. We don't want to go too far back. Maybe we'll bring these down a bit more. We don't have to get this absolutely exact, but we want it fairly close. Obviously, some, you know, you will always have some discrepancies in your modeling sheet, so you can't expect it to be completely exact. We'll pull these back here, that one back there. Let's go ahead and just line these up. So I'm just selecting a vertex at a time and then moving it around. There we go. Now we can go ahead and select all four vertices and hit E to extrude, take it out right to about that seam. We'll maybe rotate it a little bit. We can grab just these vertices, move them over, maybe move these over a little bit more, select them again, hit E to extrude, and we'll take it out to right about here. Let's go ahead and move this out. Let's check it from the top view, and we can see that we need to make some adjustments. So we'll adjust these adjust these back here and then take these ones rotate them around switch into side view and we can then bring this back about like that okay that should be pretty close what we'll go ahead and do now is just add in a simple circle for the wings here or for the propeller part. So what I want to do is add in a new circle right here. And to do that, I'm just going to left click from the top view to position my 3D cursor right there. And then I'll also check it from the, from the front view by just clicking right in the center as well. And now from the top view, I can hit Shift A, add in mesh and circle. On the circle, let's go ahead and hit F6, which will bring up our operator panel, which allows us to adjust some of the properties of the circle. You just need to be sure that you do that before you make any actual changes to it. And let's go ahead and just set this to 12 vertices. Then we can just go ahead and move our mouse away from that to hover out. And let's just scale this up to be the correct size, about like that. We can go ahead and move it up a little bit from this front view. We can rotate it around to fit. And then I'm just going to... Uh, hit E to extrude, take it out, or actually let's right click or cancel that. So let's hit E to extrude and scale it in first. This way we can scale in for the props here. Let's go ahead and select all of it. So I'll Alt, Shift, right click on there, switch into one, hit one to switch to front view, maybe move this down a little bit, and then hit E to extrude, take that down some more, right about like that. And then maybe I can go ahead and, well that actually looks pretty much spot on right there. So we'll pull this back. We can pull this one back. Maybe scale it to zero along the X. We're close to zero. We move it up a little bit. We can move this back edge up a little bit as well. Even it out a bit more. Same thing here. Maybe move this up. We'll go ahead and move this all the way over. I'm going to go ahead and scale it to zero along the X, and we'll scale to zero along the Y. So I hit S, Y, and then zero on my number pad, and then move it in there. And then I want to go ahead and bring this down right here. We'll also rotate a little bit to match the rotation of the circle, something about like that. So now we can really start to see it coming together for the basic shape. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, let's extrude the, the tail fins real quick. So what I want to do is grab this loop here, and we're just going to move it forward along the y-axis to give us access, or basically to the front of the tail fin. We'll also move this down to fit that there as well, and that one. Just move those down, and then we're going to add in another loop right here. So I'll hit Control r and then slide it back. And then what I want to do is let's just position our cursor right about here. Let's hit 7 to go into top view. We'll move it over from the side to be about right there. And let's hit Shift A, add in a cube. And then we want to go ahead and hit F6 to bring up our properties panel. And let's just, well, I guess we can't actually adjust the scale in here. So in that case, we just need to hit S. But you'll notice that it locks to the center here, which we don't want to do. So let's just disable the clipping momentarily. Scale this down to about like that. We'll scale it along the Y-axis. Maybe position better to fit the tail fin about like that. And let's go ahead and re-enable clipping. Then we'll grab just this se section here, move it back, left click, deselect this one here, 
move this one forward, and then let's select everything, uh, which you can do by hovering over one of the vert vertices assigned, and then hit L to de or to select it all, and we're going to hit S and Z to scale it way down, and that ought to be about right. Then we'll go ahead and pull this up, maybe scale down a bit more. Let's go ahead and select this one here. From the side, I'm going to take it down to about right there, maybe adjust this a little bit, something about like that. Then I'm going to hit E to extrude, take it in, move this forward, maybe scale along the y-axis just a little bit, and then I'll take this down, and I can see that I want to bring it in all the way to about there. There we go, and we'll join all of these later down the road, but we want to just get them nice and blocked in to give us the the basic shapes. So that does it for the tail fins. And so what I want to do lastly is just do a little bit more fine tuning by adding in uh, two loop cuts just like this right down the center. And then I want to go in and we'll select all of these edges and we're just going to hit G and X, pull them in along the X axis and start getting a more accurate shape to the, the profile here. Uh, we'll go ahead and select these ones as well. We'll pull them in. From the top view, I can see what I want to do. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab all these ones here. We'll pull them in. Maybe these can come out a bit more because that's the engine shape. Uh, this one here, we'll go ahead and bring in, we'll bring those back. I'm going to grab these ones on the top, we'll pull them in, round that off, same thing down here. So I'm just shift right clicking to select all these vertices. There we are. Uh, we'll go ahead and add in another loop cut here, which will then allow us to pull this up. We can then pull this back in here, pull that out. Maybe rotate all of these to get a little bit more of the nose cone here. Bring these in. Bring these in along the x-axis. These in. So now we're just worried about getting more of the, the actual shape down. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Uh, maybe we'll go ahead and let's select these. We're going to take them down along the z-axis a little bit. Maybe pull that one back up. Maybe pull these forward. Take these up just a little bit. And that starts to give us a pretty good shape going on. Um, Let's go ahead and these front ones we're going to take forward. Bring that into there. And that looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and call that quits for the, the very first part. Uh, or actually, let's go ahead and add in one more loop along the tail fins right about there. Pull that up to get us the correct shape of our tail fins. You can see this from the side view. Looks to be about like that. And there we go. Just adjusting these just a little bit. Okay, and that's all we're going to do for this section. So that's blocking in the basic forms that gets us a, a good idea of kind of what we're looking at. Um, and from here, we'll be able to go in. We'll be able to refine the silhouette by adding in some necessary loops, maybe separating some pieces where we need. And then we'll go on to actually separating the pieces, adding in color, and starting to distinguish between all the different parts.